Ah, Marvel. I remember the good old days when watching Marvel movies excited me to death, getting everyone around me hyped as well. But as we all know, good things don't last. And we've gotten what is the biggest oh, lull in Marvel no. history after Avengers Endgame. But with the announcement of Deadpool 3 recently, it made me recollect on the MCU's past. And I couldn't help but notice how most movies, and especially its villains, I had completely forgotten about. And considering how prevalent some of the villains are in comics, I couldn't help but feel the need to take a look back at some of the most egregiously neglected villains of the MCU slate. So in today's video, we're going to be tackling some MCU villains who deserve better. Black Widow was the first movie that released during the hellscape of COVID, and unfortunately, even if it had a theatrical release, the movie still would have been just okay at best, in my opinion. The movie should have had more grounded moments, and for a street-level character, she should have had little to no CGI scenes. But I guess if we didn't, we wouldn't have had this masterpiece of a shot now, would we? What the fuck is this piece of shit? But it is a huge shame the movie was just okay, especially since it was about a major player of the Avengers team. The biggest waste from this movie actually comes in the form of one of its antagonists being Taskmaster. Marvel has a habit of turning villains into villain of the week type antagonists, and it's really rare for any villain to make it past one movie. And look, I get it, but it does a massive disservice to certain characters who've had interesting and unique character arcs in the past. Taskmaster is a very down-to-earth and formidable foe, and for a street-level character like Black Widow, it's honestly a perfect matchup for her in terms of a good villain. Yet the movie turns what could have been an interesting espionage thriller movie into another CGI hype fest with the Black Widow protocol and the leader of the program being some Discord mod looking guy who has barely any screen time time and then gets one off in two seconds. With this came Taskmaster being delegated to the background as a side villain, which is like fine, but what's worse is that she does nothing in the entire movie. She doesn't even talk. Like Ultimate Spider-Man made Taskmaster more interesting than in this movie. It's not the most egregiously bad villain effort here, but it's just a shame how Marvel treats its street level villains. Especially Taskmaster had if they used her right, could have been a top five villain easily. If the movie dived deeper into its thriller spy espionage roots, hopefully in the future we can see a different version of Taskmaster, someone who doesn't get pushed aside and will provide a formidable foe to someone. Maybe Daredevil? Who knows? I'd really like to see this though, and I'd really like to see this character again in the future if given the chance. Now, I don't think Ego is a bad character in this movie. I actually enjoy how he is used as a character device within the film, and I think the writing of him as a character is amazing. James Gunn does a really good job. Having Ego help Peter realize how important his Guardians family was, and how family doesn't need to be just blood-related was cool. It also made Peter Quill a lot more interesting as a character in the long run, giving him this huge power increase that I didn't expect a character like his to have. And I mean, Kurt Russell, he's just a living legend at this point, so his acting in this movie was awesome. My main issue with the film itself, or the character, is just how little we saw of Ego being an actual, like, planet. Like, seeing Kurt Russell as the host of the planet was fun, but from what I remember in the comics, Ego was a literal planet, like a living celestial. And I know having the final battle be as bombastic and huge as it was was important for all the characters, but I think having Ego get killed off within that and it being only one movie was a bit of a waste. I think it would have been cool to have him around a bit longer to be shown off in random spots here or there. After all, he is a living planet. It would have been cool to see him pop up in other films, like Eternals, maybe? I'm just spitballing here, but for what we got, I'm not complaining too too much. Again, the movie does a really good job of portraying familiar relationships, and the writing is really good regardless. I am an avid Incredible Hulk fan, for what it's worth. This is my Hulk, and will always be my Hulk. I can't let Green Mark Ruffalo taint the already horrid image of what the Hulk is today anymore. Damn! If you go back and rewatch this movie, it'll feel completely dissociated from the current MCU slate. It's nuts. It'll feel like whiplash if you go from this movie to something like the Marvels. But one thing I always enjoyed in the movie, other than the Hulk himself, was the Abomination. He was a pretty one-note villain in the movie, but I did enjoy Tim Roth's performance in the film a lot. Seeing a man get engrossed in the feeling of getting stronger, but slowly turning into a monster was awesome. And I mean, the final fight between the two heroes? Immaculate. I think people really underestimate how awesome the final fight scene between them was. Plus, this is just phenomenal. Hulk! Smash! So you'd think I'd be upset that he was a one and done villain, right? Well, he actually made a return in this show. Yeah, they just completely butchered his character here. Sure, he looks more comic accurate, but what in the hell have they done to my boy here? He's the leader of some therapy group or something? This version of Blonsky would get curb stomped by his Incredible Hulk version in a second. I, for one, find the She-Hulk show to be the lowest of the low when it comes to modern day MCU, and Blonsky was ruined for me within this show, as was a lot of things. I think the MCU just wasted another classic Hulk villain and is doing their best to make the Hulk the worst superhero ever made at this point. There's really no coming back from this show for the Hulk, in my honest opinion. Thank you. 
This one hurts so much to see. Imagine getting Christian Bale, one of the greatest living actors of our generation today, and then barely having him in the movie and turning his character into a Wish.com version of the comic book counterpart. I have nothing against Bale's acting in this movie, for what it's worth. He gives it his all in all the scenes he's in, and it's so goddamn good. I'm an avid Thor 4 hater, and I can't disrespect Bale's acting in this movie at all, which is why he deserves so much better. In the comics, Gore is a very formidable threat to the gods of the Marvel Universe, who slaughter so many of them in brutal and vicious ways. Yet in the movie, he kills like one on screen, and that's it. Gore could have been an overarching big bad in a similar vein to Thanos, had they let the character breathe and develop over more than just one movie, especially away from Taika's five-year-old humor mouth. Anyways, Christian Bale deserved like $500 million for even being associated with this movie, regardless. Honestly shocked Justin Hammer never got more movies after Iron Man 2. His rapport with Tony in this movie is one of the best parts about the entire film, in my opinion. That opening scene in Congress, where Tony shows off Hammer's destroyed robots, is goddamn hilarious. No grave, immediate threat here. Is that Justin Hammer? Right How did Hammer get right. in Justin, you're on TV, right focus up. He was the perfect personality foil for Tony that I was shocked to see never get mentioned or be seen again. I guess he's just locked up in some prison somewhere? I don't know, I think Marvel wasted another amazing actor in Sam Rockwell, but also a great character with a natural chemistry with Tony Stark. Unfortunately, now that Tony is dead, we'll, we'll never know the possibilities of what could have been. And that's a true waste of talent and characterization. Continuing with the Iron Man villain train, we have the original Mandarin from Iron Man 3, the guy who turned out to be a paid actor. Yeah. I'm not super upset about the actor thing anymore. At the time of seeing the movie, I thought it was very stupid, but I've grown to find the concept to be kind of funny. My main issue is that Aldrich Killian turned into a goofy Sunday cartoon villain that just doesn't work well with the mostly grounded hero being Iron Man, especially with the overall take that Iron Man 3 was going for in the beginning. Overall though, when the trailers for Iron Man 3 were coming out back in 2012, I was really excited to see the return of the more grounded roots of Iron Man we hadn't seen since 2008. Him going to have to fight the terrorists associated with his original capture was such a thrilling concept, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm a huge fan of grounded stories, especially ones that could have had a drastic character shift in one of the more prominent characters of the MCU back then. Seeing Tony going through PTSD while also trying to fight a leader from his past, now that's goddamn awesome. As well as having to deal with the consequences of murdering all those terrorists in the first one would have been such an interesting dilemma for Tony to have. Instead, we got a very cheesy, super-powered freak of a villain that took me out of the whole place plot of the movie, and I think the Mandarin, especially the original version, was kind of wasted. wild that Kang is already on this list of wasted villains, but let me explain. Seeing as Jonathan Majors is a literal convict now, Marvel has no choice but to pivot or cast a whole random ass actor and make the excuse that his variants look different when all the variants in Quantumania looked exactly like Jonathan Majors. As someone who remembers how interesting of a character they made Kang in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, I literally couldn't tell you one standout thing about Kang in any of his performances in the MCU, because he's only in three. We have season one of Loki, which I doubt many people watched, and he was the only in one scene. Then we had Ant-Man 3, which I mean, come on. And the final appearance of Jonathan Majors as Kang was in season 2 of Loki, which was really good, but I doubt many people watched the show just for him. With Thanos, there was this consistent reminder of a threat looming in the distance, and with Kang, they tried doing that, but with the fact you could just kill off any Kang and another would sprout, kind of took the authenticity of having one big bad away. It just felt void of any substance, really. With the state of the MCU right now, I think whatever they go about Kang will probably be worse than what could have been. And for a character like him, it would have been cool to see him done justice a little bit more. Yeah, where do I begin with this one? Of all the villains I've mentioned here, this one has gotta hurt the most. A villain that is so top tier, but reduced to only being in one movie has got to be a crime somewhere. Ultron is the perfect villain to counteract Tony Stark. In Age of Ultron, does a great job of portraying that dynamic within the film. For like two seconds before destroying Ultron in one go by destroying a floating rock. So you're telling me the biggest virus in robotic form is easily beaten by destroying his little robots and dropping a city? Come on, ain't no way. And even in what if they make his character as OP as he should be. He took out Thanos within a swipe of his hand. In my opinion, Ultron should 
have been the next big bad after Thanos and should have returned within a full arc over the MCU. He's too villainous of a character and with James Spader voicing him, you basically had a pitch perfect diamond you traded in for a ring pot. Ultron was the most interesting arc to read in the comics and seeing him reduced to a one-off villain for the Avengers was wild and in my honest opinion was the biggest waste of a villain in the MCU's history who deserved so much better. It's a shame all of these villains who have such compelling backstories and arcs were reduced to one-off villains with little screen time after their one movie. Marvel has done a lot of good in the past, don't get me wrong, but the use of overarching villains is a massive setback that has plagued the MCU way before their downfall with Phase 4. I hope you all got an understanding of some villains I think deserve better, and let me know what you all think down below. What other villains deserve more time in the spotlight? That's all I have for today, guys. I'll see you all very soon. Peace out.